Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and we have a special guest tire for this tutorial, Mr. John Malacher. John, welcome. Pleasure. John is going to share with us a really great pattern. We're going to talk a little bit about it first, go over the materials, and then tie this fly for you. Stay tuned. Before we tie this pattern, we're going to pick John's brain just a little bit. So John, what's the name of this fly and what can you tell us about it? It's called the Swimming Crane Fly Larva okay. and it is a simple pattern. It's an older pattern that I recently saw on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And when I tied it for my uncle, he laughed and said, John, this pattern's been around since I've been a kid. <laughs> and it's just one of those patterns, it's around because it works. And it uses the movement from the natural rabbit strip, the okay. zonker strip. And you can either go down in a smaller size, you can bump it down to a pine scroll zonker to in a 14 or 16. Okay. And then in the patterns that I prefer in a 10 or 12 is on a natural rabbit zonker strip. Okay, so I'm hearing lots of stuff in there. We have zonker strips, which by the way, for fly tires out there, there's two types of zonker strips. There's a the traditional cut and there's a cross cut. We're talking about the traditional here, yes, right? Yes, not the cross cut. And um, now I love that you're, you're kind of already telling us about a variation about this pine squirrel. And pine squirrel is more of a, we'll say a shorter fiber, does yes. that make sense? And whenever you, you go to the smaller, you said uh, 14, 16? Yes. And then larger, 10, 12. And if you had to, if there was just that one size that would be your go-to, what would it be? A size 12 with a 1 8 size bead head. Oh, that sounds even better. Anything else you want to share before we start tying this? It's very important to include a loop at the end. I'll show with the monofilament, either fluorocarbon or, mon or nylon. Mm -hmm. And it's just used to keep the tail from wrapping around the hook and okay. to keep it fouled up so you get a better hook set. Okay. Is there a certain pound test you like? Um, 25, 20, and then you can, if you want to spice it up, you can use some amnesia. Okay, even better. That sounds really fun. So um, before John ties this, we're going to flash the materials list, and then once we're finished tying it, we're going to talk about some ways that we can fly fish with it, and also some variations of the pattern. Before we start this pattern, John, what are some things for the viewers to look for while you're tying? So the most important thing to this pattern is the tail guard, and this okay. is made from 25 pound tippet. And this helps to keep the hook from falling up when it's wet, so it can't really get locked in. Okay. Also there's segmentation underneath the fly. Okay. And I also cleaned out the hook gap. So it's a little cleaner hook set and it hooks up a lot better this way. All right, cool. So those are some things for everyone to kind of look for while John's tying, and so let's get a a clean hook in this vise and start tying this pattern. Now we're going to have John tie the swimming crane fly larva. Uh, John, before going through this pattern, will you show us some of the materials you're going to be using? First, I have a Partridge Patriot size 12 jig hook in with the 3.5 millimeter black tungsten bead. I see it says stealth black on it. This is the matte black, less shine. Okay. The weed guard, I have Umqua. Okay. 25 pound tippet. And then the main body is made up by the micro rabbit chenille okay. and chinchilla. So first I'm going to put down a thread base with my bobbin. And this is 6 uni Unithread. Cool. I noticed it's a Stonfo bobbin too. Yes, in the black ver version, which I believe is better. <laughs> than the red? Yes. <laughs> a little insider joke there, everybody. All right, so like I said, the tail guard is very important. And so it actually slides right up into the slot of the bead. So I don't know if you can see that, but mm -hmm. you can see the thread goes. And then just put a thread down all the way to the back. And then when I get to the back, I try to do a hook gap, quarter inch or so. For the length of the guard? Yes. So put some in. Just a little loop. And this just keeps the tail from getting fouled up. And then when you have that excess, you're gonna cut off, and it's actually gonna snap right in the slot again. And it actually helps to lock everything into place. So if you can see the bead head is actually fairly stable. Okay. Work everything right to the back. And then I'm gonna tie in the zonker. So what I do is bring it in. And then it's very important that you get down to the bare leather strip mm -hmm. just to make sure everything can lock in. And then I normally do three wraps just to make sure everything's locked in. And for those of you out there that haven't used Zonker before, um, John, he, he obviously has used this material quite a bit, but you'll notice there's a way that the Zonker just tends to lie. And so right now, 
Uh, for those of you watching this, it, it lies to the right or to John's left, so he wants it going out that way whenever he ties it in. And John, speaking of you tying that zonker in, uh, can you talk a little bit about the, the length of that tail for that zonker strip? The tail length is pure preference. I noticed that a longer tail gives better movement, but also then picks up more river slime. So you kind of have to pick which one you prefer. And then you're gonna palmer back the zonker strip just like a uh, hackle. Mm -hmm. And then I do overlapping wraps just to make sure everything's in place. And then another trick to do with this pattern is you can actually wet the zonker a little bit okay. and it helps to keep it a little bit more manageable. Gotcha. Gosh, that is looking really nice as you're moving forward. Do one more. Okay. Make sure everything fluffs up. And bring it in. Cut off your strip. Mm -hmm. Once again, make sure everything is locked into place. And then since this pattern does fish up towards the bottom, I like to do a double whip finish just to make sure increase durability. Gosh, what a simple pattern. And then all of that fluff makes for great movement in the water. Mm. Cut off my thread. Then to increase hookups, what I do is I palmer the chenille back a little bit, then also down. Okay. And then I will clear the hook gap with a snip. Rotate it over to make sure everything is clear from the hook gap. Okay. So you're really just trimming all of that zonker, all the, those, those loose fibers, just away from that hook gap to really yes. help secure fish whenever you hook and then, them. Right. So when this this will actually float kind of upside down, more this way. Okay. And then you can see that all this fluff will be down moving in the water, Jeez. and then you have a clean hook gap for the fish. What a great looking fly. And then some other ways you can vary the pattern is with pine squirrel. So in a smaller hook, this is actually a size 16. And then I bump the thread guard or the tail guard down to a size 12 tippet. Okay. But it really, for smaller patterns. Jeez, that's nice. Yeah. And then like for Erie, I do an olive color just yeah. for our emerald shiner. And then I actually kind of did a more of a hot spot that's actually claret. Okay. And then this is actually natural brown with some guard hairs. So a little bit Jeez. more. A little bit more action even with the extra fluff. Wow, we have, it looks like we have lots of variations there. Um, we're gonna talk about those variations in our final discussion. You know, before we get to that final discussion, why don't you put the original in one more time? We'll give everyone a 360 look at that. And what a, just a great looking fly. What a quick pattern. Uh, this is gonna kind of be classified as that guide style fly that's just really quick to get out. And I'm sure this thing looks just killer in the water whenever it's wet. And one more. Just love the look at that. Oh, cool, John. All right, why don't you leave that in there? Um, we'll shift the camera angle and we'll talk a little bit more about this fly. Well, the one thing I would like to tell you about this pattern before we kind of finalize everything up and, and learn more about it from John is how it came to be for this channel. John and I were tying at a, a great Pittsburgh fly shop called International Angler. It was a fly tying night. And while we were there, I saw him tying this fly and I kept just peeking at it and I finally said, John, tell me about this fly. Does it catch fish? And he said, yes, it definitely does. So the more I thought about it, I said, John, you have to tie this fly for my channel. I guarantee there's so many viewers out there that probably don't know about this one, but would love to have it in their box. And I can tell all of you, it took me a while to convince John to say yes, but he did. And I'm sure now that you've all seen him tie it, you can agree with me, it's a great pattern. Now, let's kind of go back to the very end of the tying portion when John started sharing some of the variations because I think that's something that a lot of tires out there really love to just get into. So John, could you give us some of the options when we're talking about the variations for this fly? So the first variation is pine squirrel or rabbit. Okay. And then you can also change the bead color. So I will use a gold or silver in most water. And then if it's high pressure water or clear water, I'll actually go to a matte black okay. just for less shine. Yeah. It seems to fish a little bit better. Okay. And then I'll also change if I'm up in Erie, I'll go with an olive or a white to match more of an animal china imitation. Okay, olive or white. Zonker strip. Perfect, okay. And then I'll also add a hot spot. I can either add it with the tail guard with a red amnesia line yep. or the chartreuse line. And then I can add a thread hotspot collar behind the bead directly behind. And I've so far I've had great success with pink, 
blue and red. All right, perfect. So there's lots of variation opportunities out there. I'm hearing the size based on the rabbit or the pine. I'm hearing about the bee colors. I'm hearing about the actual zonker strip color. You can add hot spots to it. Basically have fun with this fly. And if you do decide to vary it at all, can you please mention that variation down in the comment section? Because John and I would love to hear some of those creations that you're coming up with. But now let's shift gears again to probably the most important part. Let's talk about fly fishing with this pattern. Um, what kind of tips can you give us and how do you like to fish this fly? So the joke I always have about this fly is the only wrong way to fish it is not to have it at the end of your line. <laughs> Great. So you can strip it like a streamer, you can dead drift it, you can put it under an indicator. And one of the ways I found out recently, I was I saw a palomino, it wasn't biting on anything, and so I got a little ambitious. I was jigging right in front of it. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, this 20-inch rainbow comes from behind it, smacks it, takes my line, yeah. it, screaming down the other way. I'm like, what just happened? And I brought it in, and it was just a great time. Like yeah. it. It's a pattern that just works. You don't yeah. know what it is. It's one of those confidence patterns you have. Yeah, I love to hear that. So I'm hearing there's really no wrong way to fish this fly, which is just a great thing. Uh, John, finally, um, I, I guarantee people might have questions about this or they're going to want to thank you about it. <laughs> How can they contact you? You can look me up on my email, jpm5268 at gmail.com or look me up on Facebook at John Paul Malacher. Perfect. Thanks, John. And um, I'll list all this contact information in the description of this video. By all means, reach out to John. Thank him for this fly and thank him for appearing on my channel. Well now, thanks go out to all of you for watching this fly tying tutorial. If you'd like to watch more of these, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook and an Instagram account under that Trout and Feather heading. On Facebook, I tend to put more information like articles, whereas on Instagram, I show more fish pics and kind of the behind the scenes to all this stuff. So John, thank you so much again for time. Thank you very much, Tim. And we'll see all of you next time.